Activity number one, understanding images. In this activity, we'll be basically trying to understand the fundamental constitutions of an image, what an image actually is, how a computer sees an image, and other several very basic concepts to get started with image processing. And these are all the concepts that we would need to solve this particular activity. And as I mentioned, we follow an 80-20 framework such that 80% of the focus is on practical implementation and programming activities and only 20% focus is on concepts. So all of the concepts that we learned, we would be actually implementing it, implementing those and we would not be learning any unnecessary concepts that we might not be using in any of our activities in any of the coming chapters. So, of course, we need to know what a digital image is, what we actually mean by that. So this is one of the fundamental concepts we will start with. Then what is the building block of an image? What is a pixel? What is a grayscale image? What is a color model? What constitutes a color image? A color image? What do we mean by image resolution? And finally, how do we actually represent an image? How does a computer represent an image? So starting with what a digital image is, what is a digital image? A digital image is basically a representation of visual information acquired from the real world through a digital medium such as a camera or any other device. We have a world object, we capture it using our device and then we get something called an analog image. After that we perform something called sampling and then we quantify the output of sampling operation and then we get a digital image. So let's look at an example to understand this block diagram and what we actually mean by sampling and quanti quantization and what is the difference between an analog image and a digital image. So let's simplify it. So let's see we have a real world object or a person uh, that we want to get a digital image of so in this case uh, this cartoon character is something that we uh, we are considering and we want to capture it using our camera and after capturing it we get a continuous image uh, and this is something that we call analog image so analog image is basically something that is continuous and not in discrete steps is uh, so you can see that the image is the uh, image is continuous the features inside the image the eyebrows and uh, all of these things are continuous and in a digital image basically we see that it's in the form of blocks or it's broken down into several discrete steps rather than having a continuous set of curves and features in in an image so this is an analog continuous image that we get and after that we sample the image and after sampling we discretize the image as you can see that there are sharp edges on this image there's uh, the, the corners of uh, the hair the all the features and the uh, all the features and everything on the image it's basically discretized and you can see that there's um, there's blocks filled and it's it's not entirely continuous so this is what we get after sampling and then we also quantize it so each of the blocks each of the blocks in the grid is something that we that represents intensity value and this intensity values value ranges from 0 to 255 which is uh, uh, zero means that uh, it's it's dark and 255 means that it's uh, totally bright for a grayscale image and we'll talk more about the intensity values for this concept I just want to give you an overall structure of what constitutes a digital image we'll be talking more about what a pixel actually is we'll be talking more about intensity value ranges we'll be talking more about all of the other concepts in more detail later so we get an analog image which is continuous in nature, we divide it into discrete steps or we break it down into a grid structure and we then quantize each of the individual units, the fundamental concepts, in uh, the component into uh, uh, to represent an intensity value. 
So sampling is basically digitization of the coordinates of an entire image and quantization is again digitization of intensities. So an analog image would have a continuous set of intensities. So for example, a color could range, color could have a color could be entirely black or it could be an entire it could be entirely white and it could be any of the infinite values or any of the infinite numbers in between which is impossible for a computer to represent because a computer thinks in terms of zeros and ones so we want to discretize the intensity values as well and this is what we mean by quantization so sampling is this digitization of coordinates and quantization is digitization of intensities and what is an example of a digital image? There are several examples of digital images and uh, uh, several applications of digital images and these range from photography to medical images to x-rays and so on. Let's move on to the fundamental component, the fundamental unit of what constitutes an image which is, which is called a pixel. So what is a pixel? Pixel literally stands for picture element. It's the smallest unit of a digital image that can display a color or an intensity value. So we have an image and we select a point in the image. If we zoom into an image that we have, we get the value of a point. And this is uh, what we mean by a pixel. The fundamental, the smallest point that uh, makes up an image is called a pixel and a pixel has an intensity value the pixel that we select is at a particular location and this is something that we would call pixel location the intensity value at that particular location is called pixel intensity so if you have had an uh, old television or if you zoom into an image you would be able to see that there is that an image is made up of a very large grid depending on the resolution of course uh, but uh, an image is made up of a very large grid and the smallest component, the smallest building block of that grid is what we call a pixel. Let's look at an example to understand it more concretely. So this is an image of uh, Abraham Lincoln. This is a pixel art image actually. So you can see clearly that all of the, uh, uh, that this image is made up of a grid and each of these grids has different shades of gray different color intensities from absolutely black to absolutely white and on uh, several shades of gray in between so uh, continuing with the previous point as you know that uh, this is a digital image this means that it has been sampled sampling operation has been performed on it that is why it is represent that is why we see it in a digitalized or discretized form rather than having continuous curves of several features in the image and of course the more number of blocks that we have the more accurate an image is and this is what we call resolution but we'll talk about that in the coming slide so this image has been sampled and it has also been quantized as you can see as i mentioned in the previous concept an image is uh, quantized which means that a single pixel value a single block value ranges from 0 to 255 but in integers so it can be 0 1 2 3 240 uh, 254 255 and any value in between but in discrete values and not continuous floating points so just integers so this is an image and we see that what a computer sees is actually um not these features not the meaning behind these images but rather uh, it sees it in the form of numbers as you can see that there are random numbers uh, inside each of these pixels and these are the numbers that correspond to the intensity values so for example you see that uh, one of the blocks here uh, is uh, has zero intensity value which means that it is absolutely dark it is it is totally black and maybe one of the other ones has 255 or close to 255 which means that it is very it has the highest intensity level so it ranges from 0 to 255 and all of the other values are basically between 0 and 255 so that's that is how a computer sees an image 
and this is where the concept of computer vision plays a role as well and this is why understanding images is so difficult it's because an image as we know it as we understand it the computer doesn't uh, understand it the same way a computer only looks at a series of numbers and and actually uh, each of the, not uh, the a computer doesn't directly look at an image as these numbers like 157 or any of the numbers between 0 and 255 but rather in a binarized fashion so these each of these numbers is then also represented in the form of bytes but i'll not go into too much details in that because this is not important for this particular activity so what you need to know is that each of these numbers is represented in an 8 byte manner such that it's uh, represented in zeros and ones basically that's it and maybe in one of the other chapters if we use it we'll cover that concept in detail but for now i think this is enough to share and so as you can see the fundamental concept uh, one of the blocks here it represents a pixel location location in the image uh, the x and y coordinates of the pixel and the pixel intensity value of 62 which is uh, basically uh, the uh, the brightness level or, or uh, the color intensity uh, for a grayscale image and what is the utility of knowing a pixel well pixel is the fundamental building block of an image and so it is used everywhere it, the applications uh, are everywhere where an image is uh, used and one example could be creating interesting pixel art if you know the concept of pixel so moving on to grayscale image the image that we talked about that we discussed so far was a grayscale image what is a grayscale image a grayscale image is an image that consists of several shades of gray ranging from black to white but with no other colors so this literally ranges from 0 to 255 now we'll talk about how a block diagram for a grayscale image might look like so a grayscale image we select a point in a grayscale image we get the value of the point and then we get a pixel intensity and the range of which is 0 to 255 so we have already talked about this in the previous two slides and so i'll not go into too much detail so this is a grayscale image this is how it is represented and pixel intensity values of a grayscale image is 0 to 255 and this is particular to a grayscale image for a different image the pixel intensity values uh, might be different or it might be in uh, represented in a different way which we'll look at later so this is all of the grayscale values that we have in a discretized manner for a grayscale image and what is an example of a grayscale image can be used for x-rays as we have seen the black and white images that we have uh, are grayscale images uh, that are used in x-rays uh, and other medical applications uh, so moving on to rgb color model before we talk about color images let's see what a color model actually is how do we represent colors so an rgb model is basically an additive system of creating colors by mixing three primary colors of red blue and green um, and uh, this is one of the most popular color models there are other color models like hsv and others which i'll not go into details because pointing again that i want to cover only the bare minimum concepts that are needed for solving the activities if we if we come across an activity that requires us to understand hsv images uh, or hsv color model we'll talk about that as a concept so let's focus on rgb color model so let's say we want to create a color which is purple or pink or light green we select our primary colors of our color model which are red blue and green in this case it could be different for a different color model and we have some certain mixing rules and using our primary colors and applying mixing rules to them we get our desired generated color for the image and for an rgb color model this is how it looks like red blue and green and all colors at the intersections of two of these or all of these 
so as you can see here in this diagram as well that these color values range uh, from uh, absolutely red to absolutely green to absolutely blue or any of the several combinations so this is a good example maybe you have used some of this uh, some of these tools in microsoft powerpoint or word or other other tools basically uh, where we adjust the rgb values and you see also the hsv values and hsv is another color model and this is how uh, an rgb color model uh, looks like so what does how does black color look like so the first term in an rgb model is of course red green uh, the second is green and the third is blue so for black all of the three components would be zero right for white all of the three components would be 255 as we saw for color for grayscale images we have just one term which is zero to 255 but for uh, color images we would have a representation in terms of red blue and green and each of the uh, the intensity values for each of these primary colors is zero to 255 so that's the main uh, difference between this and uh, grayscale image the intensity values are same but we have three primary colors and how do we represent green 0 to 55 0 because the second term is green likewise red and blue similarly if we want to generate our own colors as we talked about so let's say we want to generate orange color and in that case orange is represented as a combination of red and green and if we add those we get orange color and that's why this model is called additive color model so rgb color model is an additive system and the other color models might be subtractive as well similarly light blue we combine green and blue and likewise as we've seen we'll be able to generate several combinations of red blue blue green or any of the colors that we want so where is this color model used well it's used in color images and uh, this is a picture from wikipedia and it shows one of the first color images that was created by a combination of red uh, green and blue channels so the reason uh, that uh, uh, it's represented as a combination of rgb is because as i mentioned it's an additive color model and uh, the values add up and then we can see three of the uh, we can see a color image comprising of several color intensity values so moving on to a color image what is a color image a color image is composed of pixels that are represented by a combination of red green and blue values we already talked about this and so how does a block diagram representing a color image look like it consists of a red channel a blue channel and a green channel we add those in several combinations based on our mixing rules and we get an RGB image. So this is how a color image actually looks like. It is made up of three channels. So this image that we see here, it's composed of, the, of three separate images or channels in red, green and blue. And another example would be if we if we take an image an original rgb image we break it down into its three channels here and then we combine those again so to understand that what it actually what a, what an image actually looks like what an rgb image is composed of so the green channel the blue channel and the red channel and all of these have pixel intensity values 0 to 255 again this is getting repetitive so i'll not go into too much details now and um, what is an application of rgb images there are so many applications we don't even need to talk about ranging from digital photography to autonomous driving or uh, basically anything our computers are composed of images and my youtube thumbnail is an image for example so uh, let's move on to talking about image resolution a, m a measure of clarity of an image measured by the number of pixels it contains so how clear an image is we use this term in our daily lives um, changing the image resolution or what is the resolution of an image if we want to improve the resolution of an image and it basically corresponds to how clear an image is so the better the resolution the more clear an image is but let's look at it in a bit more detail so we have an image 
we have the image has a size it has a height and a width the image has a certain number of pixels which we talked about pixels per inch or uh, however way we represent it but it has a certain number of pixels so uh, when we talk about resolution we talk about the size of the image and we also talk about the pixel composition the number of pixels in the image so pixel so an image is represented in the form of a grid simply speaking and for a for this particular for a particular example here let's take the height of 8 pixels and the width of 10 pixels so this is how size is represented so size is not represented in terms of a height of certain centimeters or millimeters it's in a computer it's represented in terms of the number of pixels if you right click on an image and check its properties you'd be able to see its resolution for example 1024 by 720 and this is where uh, what it uh, it talks about height and width and the number of pixels along uh, the length and the width of the image so this is a good example that i uh, took from wikipedia uh, so the first image here points to a one by one size and uh, height of one pixel and width of one pixel so it doesn't contain too much information and if we take a pixel let's say of two by two you see there is more information that can be captured likewise so five by five we have more for ten by ten which is which captures something but it doesn't look very clear and then if we increase the number of pixels in each of the directions for its height and width we get a really good uh, a, a really clear image and this is what we say when we say an image has high resolution for example this particular image has a resolution of 189 by 170 these are the pixels in its height and width and it has one channel because it's a grayscale image it has 96 dpi which is just a measure of number of pixels per inch and the rgb image of similar size basically but of three channels and similar pixel compositions so this is just to give an example and what are its applications of image resolution it is used in uh, photo editing and stuff like that digital photography and again uh, anywhere uh, where the uh, where we require image data for computer vision of course and uh, of course you might be wondering why i have included some uh, random applications here because I'm following a clear structure for all, for all of these concept slides, which means that for more complicated concepts, the, I want to also talk about talk a bit about what applications those concepts have. Of course, here it's too fundamental of a concept. All of these concepts are just talking about what an image is. And so it doesn't really make much sense to uh, talk about an application, but it's keeping the structure in account. So just just so you know image representation how do we actually represent an image in python uh, so we represent uh, images in python as a, as three dimensional arrays and we let's say we have a grayscale image we we get the image data the information that the image contains and we have a we have a specific file format in which we want to show the image or in which the image is actually image actually exists and this is what we call as an image representation so let's say we have this particular image here and for us it's an image for us it's an image consisting of an of a hall with several items on there but for computer it's basically zeros and ones as we pointed out a digital image is means something totally different for a computer it, it means a series of zeros and ones a series of numbers represented in the form of bytes and so if we if we see how an image is actually represented in python it's in the form of numpy arrays and if you're not familiar with numpy arrays you can do a quick google search and uh, you'd be able to find out what an uh, what a numpy array actually is it's basically a representation of array in a numpy in the numpy library which is used in python which is probably the most popular uh, python mathematics uh, library so uh, so if we look at an image what a uh, 
what a python representation of it looks like is it looks like a series of numbers and as you probably can make sense of the numbers all of the numbers that are there they are from 0 to 255 which represent the intensity values and if you look closely we see also that there are there's a sub array there uh, uh, consisting of three elements and as you might have guessed it it represents basically the color intensity values for rgb so red blue and green and this is because it's a it's a color image if it was a grayscale image we would have just one term here and we would not have um array and that's that's why we use a three-dimensional array a one-dimensional array basically consists of um some specific items uh, that are represented but only in one dimension and a two-dimensional array consists also of another dimension uh, in addition to the one-dimensional array so for an image height and width these are represented in the form of two-dimensional array so a grayscale image essentially is represented in the form of a two-dimensional array and when it comes to RGB images, we represent it in the form of three channels called RGB channels as we looked at. And they are represented, all of these are represented in two dimensional arrays. And uh, the entire representation is a three dimensional array then because each term now has, is an array in itself. For example, the term here one or any number from zero to 255 would actually be uh an array of three terms a one dimensional array of three terms so then there are basically three arrays one within within the other and that's why it's a three dimensional array and it could also be a four dimensional array if it if you also want to represent the transparency and you might have seen it in microsoft um, word or powerpoint or office tools that sometimes we also care about transparency of an image and in that case we would have four channels there could be other uh, other set of channels or other representations but here we focus on the common rgb image representation and their file formats could be jpeg png and bmp and they are used they're basically each each format is suitable for specific use cases which i'll not go into too much details of because that is not relevant and the pixel intensity values of each of these are 20 to 255 already talked about that and what are the applications of representing an image well you can guess the answer and again uh, um, the reason why i talk about applications on each slide for each of the concepts is because this is a standard format that i'm uh, using and i will be using for the entire course and maybe for all of the other technical content that i would be creating on this channel um, i talk about a block diagram or a general representation of a concept and then i take an example to connect it with the block diagram a practical example of how how the concept looks like and of course first we have a definition and then we have then i show a picture of an application in the real world with additional references or, or references of where i took the images and other data from so this is the format that i'll be using and of course for this simplistic image um, for these simplistic image concepts maybe it doesn't make sense to include an application in every video, but I did it for the sake of consistency.